I'm John Kerrigan. I am a math adjunct in the mathematics department at Rutgers University. I got involved in active learning because of my supervisor, Michael Weingart, in the math department. He has worked tirelessly to convert our topics in mathematics for a liberal arts course into a course that students want to take and get something out of rather than viewing it as a graduation requirement. I think the conventional understanding of what mathematics teaching and learning looks like in the undergraduate setting is more of a traditional process where students are passive and take notes off of the board or try practice problems. But in active learning, the instructor creates opportunities for students to engage with the content, to engage with one another, and also engage with the instructor. A lot of the literature on active learning suggests that there should be pausing as much as possible, that you don't want to go for more than, say, 10 or 15 minutes before you pause and give students an opportunity to reflect on what you taught or have them try something. So one of the strategies I use is called Think Pair Share, where you pose a question, they think about what their answer is going to be, they pair up and start to share their answers. What did you think? What did you think? I also utilize peer teaching wherever possible, which is where I empower students to teach one another using the equipment in the room, such as the desktop whiteboards, the wall whiteboards, if they want to use their laptops and work out of a Google Doc and project it on the screen. I think that the design of the active learning classroom tables prevent social loafing. The students sit in groups of three within their bigger group of nine. So when I do give a task, it's very difficult for one of the three students to have no idea what's going on and be able to survive. So I feel that the students do come a little bit better prepared. In other college classrooms, the teacher is the focal point of the room. In this type of situation, there is no front of the room. My desk is in the middle, so I have to continuously move around the room and be visible to students as much as I can. I wanted to do it because I felt it would be a challenge in a dense course like Calculus 2 where I'm preparing future engineers and math majors and computer scientists with all of the, the formulas and the strategies for manipulating things like integrals and sequences and series. So I took it as a challenge to take content that's normally pretty dry and very lecture based and to turn it into something more active. I was actually afraid that this audience wouldn't like that type of instruction because being a math person or a science person or computer science person, usually those students are very procedural and want to know the steps and the rules and they want to just mimic it. But I've tried to break away from that style of instruction and empower students to discover concepts rather than just passively be told what they are. If someone wants to try active learning, I would highly suggest they get involved in the active learning community and also stop by at the um, Digital Classroom Services. I credit a lot of my knowledge of how to operate the room to them. They offered an active learning boot camp, which I attended by hearing my colleagues share what they do in, the, in their classes and also by engaging in active activities ourselves in that boot camp. I felt like a lot of my questions and fears were answered and calmed down because I got to hear from other people teaching bigger classes how they dealt with those things. I would highly recommend any instructor to give active learning a try. It may seem daunting at first, but I really believe it has been a transformative experience for me. It really is an empowering opportunity for students and also for the instructor to really get to know your kids beyond just having them sit in the lecture hall and be recipients of information.